we are sorry for what for, for we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Father knows that you need all these things. 
But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May my words be true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You might get the idea from the first reading that one of the chief characteristics of God, and indeed you might get this idea from reading the, the Old Testament, that one of the chief characteristics of God is anger and wrath and the desire to punish people who go astray. That image persists, I think, in many people's minds. But in fact, it is an image which is uh, reversed by the New Testament. Jesus shows a God who comes towards us, like the Father who came towards the prodigal son, who comes towards us not in wrath and in anger, but in, in, in the desire to bring us to him, to forgive, to restore, and to make hallowed. The chief characteristic of God, I think, is uh, obviously is love. And love is shown particularly through his generosity. And one of the things that we celebrate today at harvest time is the generosity of the earth, the generosity of God himself, who, through his Holy Spirit, brings life and gives the increase. In that first reading from Job, alongside some of the more negative images, you get also the strong image that the plentiful harvest is a sign of God's care. And Joel tells, Joel speaks the words of God, you will know through all that I am providing for you that I am in the midst of you. And the reading from Matthew continues the same theme, the theme of God's care. If nature is glorious, says Jesus, how much more glorious are we do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what shall we drink, or what will we wear? He says it's the Gentiles, people who don't believe in God, is, I think, what is indicated there, who strive for all these things, who are concerned about the latest fashion, and having all the latest gear, and so on. It is the Gentiles who strive for these things. And indeed, he says, your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. And strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these things will be get, given to you as well. God comes towards us in generosity, but he also comes towards us, well, I suppose you would have to say in judgment. But a judgment which is designed to bring people to him. And what he's saying in those last few words, Strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Sort out your priorities. What's really important? Is it really important that you have the latest gear, that you um, can sort of sit back and say, my barns are full, I have nothing else to do, I'm actually I'm having a wonderful time, or as in the modern phrase, I'm having fun. Is that the most important thing God says to us? Or is the most important thing to establish on earth a reflection of the kingdom of heaven? He says, think about it, work it out for yourself. And what God is really, I think, saying to us, what Jesus is saying to us in these words, is look, your heavenly Father is generous. He knows what you need, he provides for you. How are you responding? How are you responding in the way that you use the gifts that he's given you? And how are you responding so that the kingdom, the kingly rule of God on earth, can be established as it is in heaven? God looks 
for a generous response to his generosity, a response which shows our commitment to him and his purposes. And the Bible, of course, offers some ways in which that response can be expressed. There's the notion of the first fruits. One of the harvest readings which is said, we didn't have it today, but we could have done, was the reading from Deuteronomy in which Moses is commanded to tell the people that the first fruits of their harvest, the first fruits of all that they do, must be dedicated to God. And there's something about the first fruits. The first time, you know, an apple is picked off the tree and you think, oh, what's it going to be like this year? The first time, for instance, there are some people, no doubt, harvesting grapes not that far away. You know, they, 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 test the, they test the grapes. The first fruits give us an idea of how things are going to be. And they, as it were, represent the whole. And the Bible says these must be dedicated to God, even to the point that the firstborn son must be dedicated to God. And then another very important principle which we find in the Bible is the idea of the tithe. And this comes from Leviticus. Deuteronomy and Leviticus are not books which we tend to read before we go to bed unless we really want to go to sleep. <laughs> but um, as I've said before, if you read these books with the question in your mind, what sort of society is, are these laws, are these principles trying to create, then they become extremely illuminating. And so you have this Leviticus 27, verse 30. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. A tithe, a tenth, of the whole produce must be dedicated to God. And these gifts, these, uh, and the tenth used to have to be brought to the the priest as a sign that you were offering it to God. These gifts were a reminder that everything belonged to God and we gave a portion back to him to thank him for what we have received. Now that verse from Leviticus about a tithe of all the produce of the land is obviously written for an agrarian society, a farming community. And it doesn't quite fit the situation of most of our lives today, where we don't trade by bartering goods, we trade by buying things with money, and we get rewarded by money for the work that we do. And today giving money is the equivalent of that tithe. And there are many churches where the principle of the tithe determines the amount that each person gives. A tithe of disposable income. The church would have no money worries at all and would have a lot of resources to put into building the kingdom if that sort of generosity was observed. Some years ago, it's rather fallen, I think, out of favour, and I think it's a huge mistake, but some years ago, the Church of England <coughs> adopted the principle of the half-tithe on the basis that there were now many charities and other claims on our generosity. There was an assumption that Christians would give a tithe of their income away to good causes. And the Church of England encouraged its people, this was maybe 30 years ago, to give a half tithe, half of what they gave to other people, to good causes, should be through the church. Um, that's quite demanding. And I've 
first came across that, I thought, crikey, can I do that? Well, I decided that I needed to put my money where my mouth was. I wasn't ordained at the time. And so I worked out what my disposable income was. I took a deep gulp and said, OK, I'll give 5% of that to the church. I've done that ever since. And so I can challenge the church to follow my example. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul puts this whole business of giving in a Christian context. And he talks about his collection for the poor in Jerusalem. The Christians in Corinth were much better off than the Christians in Jerusalem. Paul reminds them of the need of the poor and urges them to be generous. And he says, you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in love. See that you also excel in this grace of giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. And St Paul also stresses to the Corinthians, there is no question of relieving others at the cost of hardship to yourselves. And later adds, each person should give as they have decided for themselves. There should be no reluctance no sense of compulsion because God loves a cheerful giver. Well, last week Keith read a bit from one of my books and I'm going to read a bit from another one which comments on that passage. When Paul met the other apostles in Jerusalem, they asked him to keep their poor in mind. This he made it his business to do, and the arrangements for his great collection are a constant theme in his letters. He exhorted and encouraged the new churches he founded to be generous in their support of the poor brethren in Israel, and their response brought joy to his heart. Generosity towards others is a sign that the Spirit is at work in our lives. It is a mark of the risen life. Paul urged this virtue upon his converts for three reasons. First, he commended generosity specifically towards those of the household of faith as an expression of their oneness together in the body of Christ. To be a Christian meant incurring obligations not merely towards the local community, but also towards their brothers and sisters in the faith in other lands. Secondly, Paul commended generosity as an important ingredient in spiritual growth. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. This connection between practical action and spiritual growth hardly needs explaining. Christians do need to put their money where their mouth is. The way we act in the world demonstrates how valid our prayer has been. And what we offer to God will be used and multiplied, thus swelling the harvest of our thanksgiving. Finally, and most importantly, Paul urges generosity in obedience to the example of Christ. For you know how generous our Lord Jesus Christ has been. He was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. These three reasons 
are the mainspring of Christian stewardship today, which teaches that giving is part of our total response to God, and not merely a matter of putting the money up to pay the bills. Christian giving is not determined primarily by need, but by what we have received. A point that Paul made clearly to the Corinthians. Every Sunday, each of you is to put aside a sum in proportion to his gains. And this clear scriptural authority for planned proportional giving ought not to be ignored. And so as we celebrate God's good gifts, I hope we hear the voice of God asking us to think very hard about how we respond to his generosity. And so we stand and we sing the hymn of praise and thanksgiving, Father Lord.
Channel 2's veterinary care to help these animals, the poor people who rely upon them to bring in their livelihood. They are being re-educated to care for their animals, love them and treat them with respect. So we pray that humanity reconnects to the animal creature kingdom, land, air and water through the heart of God. Recognising they are sentient souls, they are part of our family, they are part of God's creation and we need to love and respect them. Amen. Let us pray to God, thanking him for his generosity and asking him to bless those in need. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the beauty of creation, for its colour, its splendour and its rich diversity. Give us an appreciation of all that you have made, that we may see your love and presence in the world around us. Lord of the harvest, yes. hear us we pray. As we give thanks for our daily bread, we pray for all who are hungry, thirsty, cold and homeless. Help us, Lord, to change the injustices of the world. Direct the minds of all in power that we may never overlook the needs of the poor and destitute. Lord of the harvest, yeah. we pray for all who work the land and sea, the farmers, fishermen, foresters, fruit producers and those who care for livestock. Lord of the harvest, hear us, we pray. Lord God, may we all be prepared to play our part in preserving your creation. We pray for those engaged in research to save our crops against disease and to produce abundant life for those who hunger. We pray for all, who, for all aid agencies and for scientific research in the field of environmental change. Make us, O oh Lord, wise stewards of this world. Lord of the harvest, yes. hear us in prayer. We give thanks, O oh God, for the light and colour and shade of the changing seasons. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all who are going through the changing <coughs> seasons of life, for your parents and their children, for the elderly, especially the housebound, and for those who are coming to the end of their earthly lives. In your creation, O oh God, we see the death of winter and the resurrection of spring. And so we pray for all who have died recently and for those whose anniversary of death occurs this month. Lord of the harvest, hear yes. us we pray. We pray for the harvest of peace in our own lives, in our nation, and all over the world. We pray, O oh Lord, for those parts of the world so familiar to us because of violence and hatred, and for the thousands of migrant people searching for a fruitful life. Lord of the harvest, hear yes. us, we pray. May we all live lives that produce an abundance of harvest of peace, and in all things may God's will be done through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand in the church peace. Before I invite you to do that, I'd like to say a thank you to all who brought these gifts. Um, as you can see, uh, cleansing products are widely um, represented because these gifts are going to the Burgess Hill, well, I think it's the Burgess Hill Food Bank, and they're, they're going to the food bank. And one of the things that, of course, food banks supply is not just food, but other household essentials. And uh, people often forget about cleaning products and so we've made a special appeal and it's been very successful so very many thanks to those of you who've done that thank you to paul and the team here who have decorated the church it really is lovely and i think we ought to give them a clap <laughs> one of the 
things you see on display in all the gifts and in the way the arrangements have been made is an expression of the gifts that God has given those who did it. And they have responded generously by giving their time and talents to beautify this house of God. And then finally, I think I've got it right with the communion, there's a single queue up here and down there. Yeah, I'll be starting to put it south aisle. That's right, going down, down the further aisle. Yeah. So um, I think there'll be traffic police. So <laughs> um, just please follow their directions. The risen Christ came and stood amongst the disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. We turn to one another and offer a sign of peace. Non tactile. <laughs> So we sing the offertory here and we plough the fields and scatter. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to set before you. This bread which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. We thank you, Father, for this wine, 
Who to find the work of human hands? It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Please be seated or kneel as you The Lord be with you. And also with this bread that we break. We break. With this wine that we bring, bread for his body, wine for his blood. This is for the cross, the cross table we bring. Heavenly Father, you made the world of time. You made the world of love your creation. Love your creation. Hear us with thankful, as with thankful hearts we celebrate your harvest of love and mercy. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so we rejoice that in this meal we are reunited with our Saviour Jesus Christ. When we turned away from you, you did not reject us but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms for love of love upon the cross and made for all and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night he was betrayed and supper with his friends, he took bread and gave them thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our hearts and lift our voice to join the song of heaven. <coughs> holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Have a sad Come to this table, you who have 
have much faith and you would like to have more. You who have been to this meal often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who want to. Come. It is Jesus who invites you to meet him here.
So we say together the prayer after communion. Lord of our hearts, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared in the bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace planted in us a reverence for all that you give us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who's doing the notices today? Oh. Do you want to do it from there where the light is? I think Peter's covered most of the notices. Uh, thank yous this morning. Um, but we'd like to thank Peter for taking the service this morning. Much appreciated. And also thanks to Richard for playing for us this morning. I know it's really enjoyed playing again here at West Western after some long time. Um, I'd like to thank you all for the donations you've kindly given. Um, they're actually going to the Hassett Food Bank, um, which Gary, the youth worker, is um, heavily involved in. Um, one other notice uh, next Saturday um, will be Churchyard Working Party at Street. Um, starting at 9.30. Um, details are on the website. Um, if you'd like to come along and join us, there'll be coffee and cake um, for all your help as well. Um, <laughs> uh, next Sunday, the service will be back at St Margaret's in Ditchley. And we'd also like to thank everybody for watching online. Um, and it'd be lovely to see you in person soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. And so we stand and sing our final hymn. Praise, oh praise our God and King.
bow our heads and we pray for God's blessing. May God, our Creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, bestow on you his care and increase the harvest of your love and righteousness. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Tend the earth to care for God's good creation and bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.